Hello everyone, thanks for coming. So if you're like me, you've had questions in life about maybe life or the things you've seen in life or um, maybe even your life in particular. But the one thing that most of us might have in common is the word purpose. We're always looking for our purpose. And if you're looking at this video, then you must believe in our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ or even want to know more about him so that you can believe. But if that's the case, then we understand as Christians that our purpose here on earth is for the fulfillment and the joy of our Heavenly Father which created us. But you might even say, well, what would that purpose be? Well, in the beginning when God first created the earth and he put everything here, he understood how beautiful it was. The next desire that he had was that he would have a being here that would be able to govern the things that he had put in place here on earth. And that's when he created man, and he created man in his own image, as we all know. So the purpose of it was for God to create a being that he could commune with, that had the choice to love him. God is our father, no matter whether you're evil, whether you believe in him or not. If you believe that he created all mankind, then he is the father of mankind, so he is our father. And like our father, we all want people to love us for who we are. Our father is no different. This is why he created man and gave him the choice to love him. But after sin came, the earth now became a cleansing process, which means that we are born to our parents and we had the opportunity to make it to our father, which is in heaven. But in the process we have to go through, it's just like any other thing that you might, let's say for instance, the meat that you may eat at home. What you receive is the finished package, is the finished product. But from animal to your finished product, it goes through a process depending on the finished product that you would like to have. And it, earth is just the same. It has become a process for us, for the Father to get us to a place to where we are acceptable to be able to be joined with him and live with him and dwell with him as he intended for here on earth. But now the new resting place will be in heaven. The new gathering place is now in heaven with him where his holy throne is. The earth is no longer holy enough for him to dwell with us here so we must go to where he is but in order for all of this to make sense to you you got to first understand who you are and the scripture tell us that we are living souls and that's what we are here today to help everyone understand the father has sent us with information he said in order for us to even try to understand our purpose should line up with his purpose our only purpose as Christians is to fulfill his purpose that he had for us. At this point in time in life, it involves us helping our fellow man to learn who he is. And in the process, for us to go through a cleansing process to get all the negative things out of us or the unlikely or the undesirable things that we may have in us out of us before it's time for us to go meet our father. coming to you with this information today because the father said in order for any of this stuff to make sense to you you must understand what you are as a living soul so to begin with that god created man and it says that out of the dust of the earth god formed the body then he breathed the breath of life into it and man became a living soul you as a person are made up of three parts there's your body which he made from the earth there's the breath that he breathed inside of you that continues to exist inside of you even though it's passed to you from your parents. It continues to live inside of you otherwise you would not be able to live in this estate. Your body would not stay alive and that was his breath of life. As a human being, that's what you are, a body, spirit, and a soul. Okay, We're going to touch on each of the three parts for you to understand how they work in unison which will, in the end, further help you understand just what we are and what that means is us being living souls and then it would even shed light on how it all ties back into being what God would have for us to be and the very God of peace sanctify you holy and I pray God your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless until the coming of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ so again this is your evidence that we are a three part being we have a body, a spirit, and a soul. These three parts will play a major part in the way that we are judged because all of them together 
uh, contribute to who you are as a living soul. What is a living soul? Let's get into this and, and, and break it down as the Father has given us. To first tackle this, let's go to Genesis where it all began. Because we must understand this, even apart from the body, we're still a spirit, which we're going to get into how that exactly works. But the, the body itself is a major contributor. But let's start at the beginning where God would have us to start. And it says, but there went up a mist from the earth and watered the whole face of the ground. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And man became a living soul. It shows us that God made the body. He breathed into it and we became a living soul. First thing that was created was the body, which is also considered to be a vessel, which is also considered to be our flesh. And another name for it is the temple of the Holy Ghost. So let's address the body first. Let's get scriptural evidence that helps us understand just what it is that the body is. Not only is the body a house, it also has members. Let's first tackle it as the temple of the Holy Ghost. What? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you which ye have of God, and ye are not your own. That breath of God given to the first person, which was Adam, still exists in us today, whether we believe in him or not, whether we're evil or good. This is grace and mercy of God that he allows his spirit to stay within us to give us more and more opportunities to try to get ourselves in, into the right position with him in order to be able to exist with him in the next existence. So through his grace and mercy, he allows us to live even when we're doing wrong. He um, don't wish that any should die and perish. So it's through his grace and mercy and his long suffering that he allows us to continue to live and not just snatch his breath from us and let us fall dead in our sins, knowing that full well we'll end up in hell because of it. This is also a reason why God considers you sinning as adultery because we all understand adultery is when a man and a woman is married and either one of them allows or brings another person into that union. The Bible says when two are married, they become one person. And when they go out and get another person, that's considered to be cheating and adultery. So the Father made our body and he put his spirit in us. We belong to him. We are not our own. So when we sin, we partner in up with Satan. We allow Satan and his spirits to come in us to show us exactly what to do. He entices us. And when we accept, we invite him in. And when his spirit is in us, then the sins can be acted out. The further evidence of this, we're going to go to Job 27, that, so that you will know that that breath of God is still in you. So again, he's letting you know that. Every breath you take is a breath that has been given to you because God first breathed in us. He said, all the while my breath is in me and the spirit of God is in my nostrils. The body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is the spirit of God that dwells in you. This is also how God keeps track of all the wrongdoing that you do. That's why he said that there's no place that God is not because God is always with you, keeping track. And his spirit is keeping a track record of everything you say and everything you do. And that's how your record is being built. So you can't escape the judgments of God because you can't do anything under the sun that he never knows about. His spirit is always with you, whether or not you believe in him or, or that you believe that that's the case. We're giving you evidence to show you that this is exactly the case. Another thing you need to know about the body is every part of your body is a sensor that collects information, which is then sent to your mind. And from your mind, it is judged on your understanding of whether or not it is evil or whether or not is it good. And then whatever you judge it to be is then entered into your heart. This is how we come up with habits. This is how we can say we like something or we love something or we hate something or we dislike something. It's also why the body still understands that when you eat, something and you're allergic to it the next time you eat it your body will respond to that every part of your body is a sensor that gathers information from experiences that you have so if you touch something hot and it causes pain then that
information is then sent to your brain when then you judge it as something bad hey that was that was painful that didn't feel good so you can you judge it and you understand that that was not something that you should be doing and from that point on that information is stored in your heart so the next time you come in contact or have an encounter with that same experience rather it be a person place or thing your heart automatically sends the information back to your mind that hey remember uh, this happened last time and this would be the reason why you would not be so eager to do it again so you could either listen to that information or block that information out it said for as the body is one and have many members and all the members of that one body being many or one body so also is christ so in this particular scripture they're using the human body as an example to help you understand how the church body is supposed to work but we're using it today literally because it's also describing the body and it's letting you know that the body is all different parts it has many different members but it's also one whole body and we use it, this scripture to help you further understand what the point we're making next is that your eyes mouth your hearing all this stuff is gateways that send information to your mind and then it's judged and then it goes from there to your heart to be stored it's judged as either either good then it's categorized as in the form of importance from least to greatest then you go from there to if rather or not you prefer to have it can you live without it or you, you can't live without it so it goes through all these different judgments and that's how it's, it is stored in your heart as such all your feelings are contained within your heart but your entire body is a sensor if the whole body were an eye where were the hearing if the whole were hearing where were the smelling so these are different parts of the body your eyes your nose your mouth your tongue your feet legs every part of your body is a sensor it says but i see another law in my members warring against the law of my mind and bringing me into captivity to the law of sin which is in my members this is to reiterate that all your senses of your body sense the information to your mind and once your eyes see that this is a circumstance that you've been in before it triggers your heart and your heart sends back the information so this is why it says your members and your mind are warring because your heart is telling your mind to tell your body to do one thing but your body is telling your mind to tell your heart that it wants to do it anyway so this is where the warring comes from between the two. Okay, so your body is a living spirit also. It has its own purposes. And um, so it's up to you to make sure that all these things are flowing. Or uh, that you train to go. Just as the Bible says, train a child in the way they would go and it won't depart from it. Um, it's the same sense of that. You have to train your mind and your heart. You have to make them think the way that God would have you to make them think or else you are failing yourself and you are failing God. But this is where most of your issues going to come from in life because, again, that spirit of the Lord is there. But if you invited Satan in, that spirit also is there. But his flesh upon him shall have pain, and the soul within him shall mourn. So here it, it shows you that your flesh sends the signal to your mind. We just seen that the flesh and your mind in communications with each other. And then your mind, once it judged the encounter or the circumstance or the experience that you may have, whether it's with a person or place or a thing, if it then judged in your mind and stored in your heart as whatever you come up with. So you are the soul. Your spirit is just another name for you as a being. Remember, we are living souls. But I'm showing you that it stored the pain. Your heart then sends the emotion or the reaction back to your mind for your body to carry out. Your emotions are stored in your heart from the experiences that your body pick up and your mind judges it and stores it in your heart. Your heart in return sends that information back when it recognizes the circumstances that you went through. It, show, it tells you how you are supposed to react to them based on how you categorize the experience.
the first judgment that happens is whether it's good or evil. So as soon as information shows you look at something, you automatically know whether it's pleasant or is it bad. Is it dangerous or non-dangerous? That's the first judgment. And then from there, you decide whether or not you like it, whether it has pain, the other senses step in from there. But also, you got the Spirit of the Lord there that's directing you. That's that conscience that you have that's always telling you, hey, this is wrong, don't do it. And um, then you have the other spirit that could be there too. Also, if you have invited it in, which means now you're in the act of adultery because you're sinning. Um, you allow another man to be in God's house, uh, and you're supposed to be one with God. So you're committing adultery whenever you sin, but that spirit comes in and it dwells with you there in that vessel that the Lord is supplying you with alongside the breath that he has, the spirit that he has in you to keep you alive. So we be offending God on many levels when we allow sin to exist in our life. So again, here it says, for as the body without the spirit, it is dead. So without God's spirit in you, there will be no more life in that flesh. Then shall the dust return to the earth as it was. Talking about the body. This is after the spirit of God has left it. And the spirit shall return unto God who gave it. Again, that'll be the breath of God. Return back to God uh, it, because it belongs to him. It never actually belongs to us. He just allowing us to use it. So that's just like you borrowing something from somebody and you don't take care of it. But you're going to pay for the consequences of any damage you allow to happen to it because you have borrowed it. It's the same thing with um, with our Heavenly Father uh, when it comes to us allowing evil to exist in our lives. Okay, hopefully in the last section we understood the body and its functions all in understanding who we are as a living soul. And we understand that the body is a vessel that God created to hold. The spirit. We understand that the body plus its members all help us exist here in this earth. So we are actually spirits or living souls that exist, that dwell inside this body. It's the only reason why we can exist in this estate here on earth. Because without this body, it's like an astronaut can't go to space without a space suit. Because certain things the body can't handle or couldn't, couldn't accept. Uh, those atmospheres and the things that have been subjected to because they were not built to exist in that environment. So because we must exist in this environment, Heavenly Father created a vessel for our um, souls to be able to exist in here on earth. But as we said also, the Spirit of God is there because the breath of God is in you. So the Spirit of God is always there. But you can also be housed with an evil spirit. And we're going to reiterate all the while my breath was in me, the Spirit of God is in my nostrils. So every time we breathe, understanding that with every breath that you take, it is the breath that God first breathed into Adam. It's so powerful. It has been passed down through all the generations, through all the human beings. We all share that same one breath that God shared with Adam when he first created him. Just as we have that conscience there that tells us when we're doing right and when we're doing wrong, that's the part of our Heavenly Father that's there. It ain't that you have a good heart or that you're so, such a special person and you had a heart to do right. It's that Spirit of God that all, that's always present in your life, that's always keeping you alive. This is the person or this is that voice that you hear when, it's t when you're about to do something that you shouldn't be doing and you hear it tell you, no, don't do this. This is not what you're supposed to be doing. Sometimes we listen and we are saved and we are spared from different circumstances. And sometimes we don't. And then it takes God's grace and mercy, which he always supplies us with, to bail us out of certain situations. Or That's the reason why we even exist today, because of his grace and mercy. But let's move on to this. You could also be housing an evil spirit. See, human beings knew nothing about sin or how to do things that went contrary to what God would have them to do. It was when Satan approached Eve in the garden that he started implementing these things or this idea to betray God and go against his wills and his purpose. So that was the first fall of man. So anytime you do evil, there's always an evil spirit present. Now they don't get the blame because they can't make you do it. They can only entice you to do it or make you aware of it, make it look appealing to you in temptation. But it's still your fault if you fall for it or take part in it because you are just fulfilling the lust of the desire that they have made you made you aware of and 
here's what it says. It says, when the unclean spirit is gone out of a man, he walketh through dry places seeking rest and findeth none. Then he said, I will return into my house from whence I came out. And when he is come, he found it empty, swept, and garnished. Again, the body is a temple of the Holy Ghost. It is also considered to be a house or a vessel. Okay, it's a holding place for your spirit, God's spirit, and in some cases, even an evil spirit, okay, can come in and dwell with you. It's a difference between them in the same space as you and just whispering these dark things in your ear. But some people actually invite them in. They encourage doing evil. They accept evil doing. And this is when the spirit comes and dwells in that house. But again, so uh, the first thing would be judgment. So that's the spirit of God going to be telling you, no, this is evil or this is good. And Satan going to be telling you, no, it's not evil. It's good. You do it. It's not bad. It's good for you. And the spirit of God going to be saying, no, it's, it's not good for you. It's bad for you. So that, that's going to be the war. And then your member is going to uh, be be telling you at the same time oh this was a good experience for me so you got all this stuff that's why the bible says you got all these laws warring in your members and in your mind from your mind and warring against your mind and your members because this is the 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 result of it all for what man knoweth the things of a man save the spirit of man which is in him again we are spirits out outside of the body we are spirits so we are spirits dwelling inside of this body but this body is not who we actually are okay we're just dwelling inside of it and thank god because this body go through a lot of changes and it's not built to last so we need to be thanking god that this body is not who we actually are so anything that we know that's pertaining to god or we think that we know about god it comes from that spirit or that same spirit that's applying every breath it's the same one that god is able to transfer his knowledge or that reminds us of the scriptures of God or reminds us or points out things as being things of God to us. We can silence the spirit of God in us and make the evil spirit more prominent. But understand that human beings are only uh, creatures that are being influenced by either evil or good. You are not your own being. You do not have control over everything the way you think you may have. I said in one of the other videos, if you have a headache, can you tell your headache to go away? It's your body. You should be able to command everything in your body to do whatever you tell it to do. Whether it's to grow taller, uh, lose weight, shorten itself, widen itself, strengthen itself. You have no control over those things. The Bible says, which man by taking one thought can add a, a cubit of measure to his own stature? No man. So we're being idiotic. It shows just how much we don't know when we think that we, we are in control. Spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. We reiterating, we showing you as the, the Father would have us to do. We letting you know that the spirit is dwelling in you. That's giving you that same breath. It's keeping track of all your wrongdoing. It's encouraging you. So every time it tells you to do the right thing and you don't do it, it's being written down. Every time it tells you to do the right thing and you listen, it writes that down also. A record is always being kept and it's going to contribute to whether or not your your name going to be written in the book of life or it is not. It said the spirit itself, the spirit that dwells in you, the same one that has you breathing every breath. This is why you should pray in the night, pray in the morning. When you get up, that the Lord allowed you to keep your breath and you're still in existence. And every night when you're going to sleep because you spent the whole day um, and you don't know what's going to happen in the night. You have no control. When you sleep, you're unconscious. You have no clue of what's going on or what's about to happen. So it's a grace and a mercy from God we ought to be appreciative of when we see the daylight in the morning. No matter how bad we might think life is, it's not as bad as if you wake up and you're not in this body anymore. And all chances for correcting your life and getting in the right place with our Heavenly Father so you can spend eternity with him in heaven in pleasant ways is eliminated and now you find yourself in hell and in torment no matter how bad you think life is here on earth it's not going to be as bad as if you go to die and go to hell and be tormented every day okay at least on earth you have a chance one day from the next to from one day being better than the other day uh, so the bible say weeping may endure for a night but joy cometh in the morning after you have ceased to exist after this flesh has died and your spirit is released there's no more chances for that. That's all going out the window. And wherever you find yourself, when you come to awareness of where you are, that's where you will be for eternity.
Job 32 and 8 says this, But there is a spirit in man, and the inspiration of the Almighty giveth them understanding. It's to reiterate to you that all the information, once the information comes into your mind, the spirit of God that's within you helps you to judge. You are either going to listen to the spirit of God or you're going to deny the spirit of God. Depending on how you live your life, you could have already silenced the spirit of God within you. And you allow, once you do that, you allow the evil spirit to be dominant and present in your life, meaning that you, that's where most of your mistakes come from. That's why you find yourself in difficult situations and always looking down on life and always it seems like you're making bad decisions because you have stifled the spirit of God that's always there. You're committing adultery by allowing the evil spirit to come in because you have chose to indulge on those things which go against our Heavenly Father and His statutes and His commandments. So by doing so, you have shut out the spirit of God that's in you that's there to lead you and guide you and keep you alive. And you have taken on the evil spirit which comes to kill, steal, and destroy. So you have allowed the enemy to come into your home. What the Bible say, if a person wants to take over the house, he got to first bind the strong man. Um, so if you allow your the Holy Spirit to be drowned out in your life through the action that you choose to hold dear to you, or you have automatically bind the strong man of your life, which is the Spirit of God, and you allow the enemy to take over the house. Um, that's just the way it works. Your body is a house. The scripture said at that time, God is no more your father, but Satan is, and the desires of your father ye will do. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. So if you find yourself, sometimes you want to listen to the good spirit that's in you, and sometimes you, you listen to the bad spirit that's in you because they are, you're allowing them. The spirit of God has to be there or else you would die. You choose to allow the evil spirit to be there through your actions and the things you prefer to do over the things that you should be doing, which is the things that are of the will of God. And you should know what those things are because you should be in your scriptures and studying your scriptures on your own. But all the material that the Lord has us to put out, this is why we put it out with so many scriptures because you're supposed to study to show, your, show yourself approved. So anything that the Lord would have anybody to do will be to you to help you fulfill the things in which he requires of you, which is to study to make yourself, show yourself approved. So this is why all of our material the Lord has commanded us to put these scriptures in there, not only to um, back up what we are saying so you don't, you're not just listening to us, but we, he has us to show you these scriptures so you'll believe what the message that he's trying to get to you is in the word. So if you believe the Bible, you, then you'll believe the message because it's backed by his scriptures. As a spirit, even without the body, for a minute, we're going to eliminate the body. So outside of the body, you are a spirit or you're still a living soul, okay? And you being a living soul or a spirit, there's two sections to you. You have a mind and you have a heart. You always have a mind. That's how you can always be conscious of what's going on around you. In the scripture, when the Bible talks about the rich man died and Lazarus died, the rich man still remembered his brothers, even though he was not here on earth. The Bible depicts that he was in hell on the other side of the gulf that was fixed. And the beggar, which was Lazarus, he was in the arms of Abraham which symbolizes the portion of heaven on the good side of the gulf. He remembered his brothers, which means that he was still conscious of everything that was going on, although he had shedded this earthly vessel, this earthly body, or this home that he dwelt in. You have a mind where all the information is judged. And, of course, we know even in nature that our mind controls our body. So they all work in unison. Your mind, your body, and your heart. So as a spirit without the body, you still have a mind where everything is judged and everything is played back. And then the result of the judgment that went through your mind for a particular experience or encounter is then stored in your heart. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your minds, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. This is what we was telling you. This is just to reiterate back. Keep your mind stayed on the things that are righteous. Only accept those things that are righteous and prove that which is good. 
okay, try everything before you allow it to come in. So many times we do that backwards. We go off um, our first encounters and our first experiences with people, places, and things. Once it changed on us, it'd be hard for us to switch that around because now you got to go back in and reprogram everything that you have accepted it in as. For instance, okay, when we date someone, we are programmed to always put our best foot forward, so to speak. So we want people to see us in our best lights, in our best attitudes. We want them to see the very best, especially when we first meet them. Because the spirit understands that that's the most important encounter. When you first meet in something, your first encounter, your first interaction, or your first experience to something is your most important experience or reaction or encounter. Because... It's at that moment where you judge it and it enters into your heart. Everything enters into your heart, whether it's love or hate, like or dislike, um, whether it's important or, or not important. Every encounter, every circumstance, every experience enters your heart and it is labeled and categorized as whatever you have judged it to be, depending on what that reaction or, or what that encounter or experience was like. Okay, so if it was very pleasant, we're going to deal with it. So if they show us all the best things, then we're going to store them in our hearts for what we're receiving them for it to be. And so if they show us all good, we're going to say, okay, they're a good person. I touched them, they soft. That's what I like. I like soft. Uh, or she got long hair. Or like, whatever it is you desire to have, if they have that, you're going to love that or you're going to like that about them. And so again, all that information is being accumulated in your mind where you're going to judge. And then by the time it enters your heart, if you have not had a bad experience, then your caution is going to go out the window when it comes to that person, that place, or that thing. So once it reaches your heart, it's going to remain there and it's going to be labeled with an emotion also. Okay, so that's why when you see that person, you'll be like, oh my God, you act differently around them. Or if we get ready to break up, you're going you're gonna to not want that to happen because now you allow emotion to be tied with it. Uh, because all those experiences were pleasant, we stored them in our hearts as something good, something right for us, and something that we wanted to have and wanted to keep. Okay, so then when we see a different part to them or they do something that's negative to us, it's hard then to go in there and change it. That's the reason why most of us get stuck in relationships and don't want to leave because once that information is stored out in your heart, once your eyes see that person or once you touch that person, your heart reminds you, hey, this is the emotion we got for that. This is soft. We love that, remember? We, we love when we touch them because they're soft. Or all the pleasant experiences are going to pour back from your heart to your mind to tell your body how to react to them. And so this is why you would get nervous or... This is why you get sweaty palms, or this is why you'll feel, um, or even on the on the opposite side of that, if it was a bad experience, this is why when you see them, your heart then going to say, hey, it's going to tell your mind, hey, be afraid, because remember what happened the last time you encountered this person or this thing or this place, and this tells the body how to react, whether it's to run, whether it's to hug them, whether it's to be more in love with them or show love to them, show hate to them, disrespect to them, whatever the case is that we have stored in our heart that makes up who we are, okay? Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. We use our minds to think. So again, this is reiterating what we are telling you, that all the information from your encounters that you receive from the senses that are, in your body, whether it's smell, it's, it's your sight, or it's your hearing, or it's your touch, or where you walk. Every part of your body is a sensor, uh, from the least to the greatest, however you may see it. Then it then turns around and sends that information to your mind, where it is processed, where it is judged, and then from there it goes into your heart. It's labeled with importance, it's labeled with good and evil, and it's labeled also with an emotion. So it's telling you here, that you, we're responsible for making sure that all things that we allow to get into our heart go there for the right reasons and that we, we judge them correctly and not prematurely before we allow them to enter in because once they enter in, it's not so easily done to get them erased and, and to start over. This is why, again, we, be, we stay in bad relationships or we continue to deal with things or be involved with things that may not be very beneficial to us and this is why when we love something, we stick with it. 
okay, because I, this is what our heart is telling us to do because of the information behind the judgment that we made on it and we stored it in our heart and our heart listened. Okay, this is the same way us as human beings have habit. This is why. Because whatever good things, whatever things are pleasant, whatever things are good for us, those are the things that we're going to continually be involved with or repeat. So again, if you store something bad in your heart as good, you're going to continue to intermingle or interact with that bad thing until you go in your heart and erase it. And sometimes that takes even a really tragic thing to reverse that. And likewise, if somebody do something that makes you hate them at first, it's going to be hard for you to forgive them because in your heart is already stored that they are no good, that they are nobody, it's not something you want, it's not something you want to be around. So all that information has to be erased. And sometimes it takes a drastic measure in order to change that thing instantly, which most likely doesn't happen, which means that also that it's going to take a process and it's going to take a process of time. If somebody did something bad to you and you're holding hatred in your heart, that's unforgiveness. The longer it takes you to forgive them and move on, the more you're being judged and God is holding you accountable for the wrong things you're doing. And this is how it works against us. For where the treasure is, there will your heart be also. Everything from every experience, every circumstance, every encounter, person, place or thing, smell, taste, feel, uh, understanding, uh, is then stored in your heart. This is what your treasures are. This is the treasure box of your spirit. As a spirit, again, you have a mind and a heart. It tells you that where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. A good man out of the good treasures of the heart bringeth forth good things, and an evil man out of the evil treasure bringeth forth evil things. So this is to reiterate to you, everything that you experience, every circumstance, every person, every place, everything, touch, smell, sight, hearing, is sent to your mind where it is judged, and then to your heart to be stored away. Then our heart tell, gives us the information back, and then tells our mind how to tell our body to react to that information that we have already stored away. So this is where we go back to get it all out. This is why the Father will judge us according to what's in our heart because he looks into our heart and he sees where we store things. So for instance, if you're a person that likes stealing, okay, in your heart you have stored that away as something good. So in your heart, your heart is going to send that message back to your mind to tell your body, hey, to take those things. And the evil spirit also is there, which is commanding you and making these, making you aware of these different circumstances or these opportunities when it's time to, for you to get involved, which is for your demise, not to help you, but to actually steal, kill, or destroy you. It's our responsibility to store the things that are pleasing to God in our hearts as good things so then our heart will then command our mind and command our bodies to always be in alignment with those good things that are pleasing to God. Likewise, if evil is the thing that we prefer the most, our heart is going to remind us to do that along with the influence of the evil spirit that's going to be around. Same as our hearts will tell our mind to remind our bodies to carry out an action that we know that is pleasing to our Heavenly Father along with the Holy Spirit that dwells in each and every one of us through grace and mercy. It reminds us and tells us what to do and try to keep us straight. But the Bible says you cannot eat at the devil's table and God's table. The Bible also says you cannot love God and mammon. You're going to love the one and hate the other. So this is what happened. The Bible, we read in the scripture earlier that a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. So if you try to be good sometimes, you try to be bad, and you're bad sometimes, then you are unstable. The Bible calls that lukewarm. The Bible says that God will spew you out. He has, he wants nothing to do with you. To him, you're a traitor, you're an adulterer, if you're trying to do both. God has no patience for those of us that do not choose his way and his way only. There is no dibbling and dabbling. The thing you should strive after every day is pleasing God at every turn. When you come to these instances, you're always going to have that choice of whether I should do it or not. It's always going to be made aware to us of whether or not this is a thing of God. Or it's a thing of evil because God's spirit is always present. And so we're never going to have that excuse that we didn't know. 
we always make that choice just before we do it, okay? And once we choose to do it, there is no repentance for it. We're going to have to beg God for his forgiveness, and hopefully he give it to you. Just so you understand that the heart talks back to the mind. He said, therefore did my heart rejoice, and my tongue was glad. Moreover, all my flesh shall rest in hope, okay? So it's showing you that my heart rejoiced first. It being to the vine, which told the tongue to sing or praise the Lord. And that translated to all of your flesh being on one accord with the things that came. But first, it originated in your heart, which again reiterates that your heart sends the command back out to your mind, which then relays them to, to the body on how to react to them. Okay, so you see the emotional tag that was attached to that. And here's what it says. But as for them whose heart walk after the heart of their detestable things and their abominations, I will recompense their way upon their own head, says the Lord. So again, it's showing you that we walk after the things that we have stored in our heart. Now, whatever we have stored in our heart, to whatever level or degree that we restore them in our heart of importance or necessity, uh, or rather we say we love it or we hate it, whatever the case is, and then we put we also tag it with an emotional tag. So whether it's to cry or be happy or, or it's to be sad or whatever the case was, there's no instance more prominent than when you're choosing a mate. You have to be careful to never go by what you see at first because everything you see at first is going to be pleasant. This is the trickery that the flesh has. The flesh wants you to choose. Nature wants you to choose. You look at the animal kingdom. Even animals go through certain rituals to be able to, to attract a mate. They are just not partnered up. They go through different rituals. Some birds dance. Some birds sing. Every animal species, including humans, we have a ritual or we have a, a thing that we do to try and attract the opposite sex because I, in our human nature, we are to multiply. Because that was the commandment of God when he first created us. So that's always in our DNA. That's always in our being to do. Say, for instance, it's all good at first and then it turns to be evil for us. We cannot leave. Why? Because everything in our heart telling us, no, stay is good for you. Stay is good for you. And because that's the way we store it. So if you gullible at your first at first sight or at, in your first experiences, you're not aware of this. You're going to take everything they give you as face value, and you're not going to say, hey, this is just part of the ritual. Let's see what happens next. This is why it's not good to move into anything quickly or make judgment quickly. Wait and give it some time and then judge. You want to see the bad and the good so you'll have something to use to judge. You don't want it to all be good, which is usually what happens when we have an experience with somebody for the first time, especially if it's mutual that we want to be together which naturally is the is the attraction between male and female. A good man out of the good treasures of his heart bringeth forth that which is good, and an evil man out of the evil treasure of his heart bringeth forth that which is evil. For out of the abundance of the heart, his mouth speaks. So again, further evidence that the heart sends a message to your mind and tell the rest of your body how to react physically and emotionally. It's very crucial that you understand these things about yourself because all the things that you store in your heart as good, whether they are holy or evil, you can store good as good, you can store evil as good depending on the person. This is why God judges the heart, not just the action itself. He wants to see what's in the heart because whatever is in your heart, he automatically knows this is the thing you're going to do. So I hope this helps you understand who you are as a living soul. I hope with this information you understand who you are as a spiritual person. This influences how you perceive things and how you enter into relationships, whether it's with a person, a place, or a thing. It doesn't matter what it is. Before you can say you love it, understanding what it is to be loved, you understand now that love is an accumulation of experiences that you have judged in your mind as good and you have stored in your heart with the respect of utmost importance or even more important than yourself or your own well-being. Use this information to help you walk through life and choose the things that are of God. And you have the responsibility to make sure that the things that you have pleasure in or take pleasure in are the things in which our Heavenly Father has pleasure in because our ultimate goal 
Whether or not you think about it every day, your ultimate goal should be to live in heaven once you have departed from this estate. Now, the scripture said the Lord has given us, he has allowed the body room to live 120 years. Most of us don't make it. And even there's a scripture that show we are normally around 70 or 80 years that we actually really live in. So anywhere in between there, your body could fail. Anything before that is a tragedy. It's really too soon because you haven't been able to take advantage of the amount of time it takes for you to get in the right place with God in order to go live with him. But the ultimate goal for all of us is to go live with him when this estate is over, when this when we cease to exist here on earth and we are transformed, we put on another body in order to exist in the next estate, whether that be heaven or hell. And hopefully for all of us, or for as many as you, it's possible that you take this serious so that you can dwell and live with our Heavenly Father And when once this existence is over. Hope this information helped you. Till next time, may the Lord bless you and keep you.